Well, hello everybody and welcome, welcome to my channel Ibasiac and welcome to what is probably going to be an epic and lengthy demonstration video of the vacuum cleaner you see behind me. Well, ever since I unboxed this vintage but unused Hoover Aquamaster on my channel, I've had a constant stream of requests. I say requests, but by the end, they became more like demands and threats. But I'm not one to give in to threats, oh no. So I'm uploading this on my own sweet time for you to watch. So I expect a lot of you out there who've been looking forward to this, who've been constantly nagging for it, are very excited at this point, aren't you? Yes, can you imagine what I'm going to do with this machine? I'm going to throw down dry dirt on the kitchen floor, in the living room, I'm going to pick it up with the Aquamaster, I'm going to connect the shampoo system and deep clean my entrance mat, getting all the gunk out of it. I'm even going to attach the Hoover power sponge and wash my hard floor. And as a grand finale, I'm going to show you how it copes on upholstery using the small upholstery attachment. You'd like to see that, wouldn't you? I bet we all would. But to teach you people a lesson, I've decided not to. I, I think not. What I'm going to do instead on this video is demonstrate this little Hoover click, which I unboxed absolutely donkeys years ago. Um, and haven't done a review of it, so here we go. This is what this is going to be. Ah, fooled you! Should have been uploading this on April the 1st. Ah, what? No, I don't you worry, you pretty little head. So I can't be that cruel. Well, I can be, but I won't be that cruel this time. No, this is the video for this. The video for this, if you're interested, will be following at some point. Bear in mind, don't nag me for this. Now you've seen this, I don't think anyone would be nagging to see that in action. But you will see in action. But then again, I'm thinking, do I want to spoil, eh, do I want to spoil this vacuum cleaner by putting dirt in it? I'm not sure if I want to do such a thing. Do, do I really want to open this vintage unused packet of three, packet of three, eh, uh, carpet shampoos, look. Three sachets inside this box. Three sachets of nostalgia. I can't even remember what this smells like. You want me to open these very hard to get shampoo sachets, one sachet per full tank of the Aquamaster. Do you? Do you want me to get this lovely in the box Aquamaster power sponge dirty? Surely you don't. What about this? The upholstery shampoo nozzle. Do you want me to get that dirty? Do you want me to take it out of the box and let dirt get to this? Well, oh, I'm going to do it. I've got to. For one thing, it'll shut you lot up who've been nagging until you find something else to nag about. But it'll also take me back to a time when I had a bit of hair. I had cheekbones. I didn't have a belly. That's the last time I smelt this detergent. Unfortunately, there's no smell of vision not yet anyway. Samsung and LG haven't come up with smell of vision We can have it in 3D. Ooh, is it coming out into your screen? Look, it's not, it's not 3D, but anyway, it gives you the effect. But we can't smell it. So I cannot, I can actually record my reaction to smelling this. Will it be how I remembered it? I don't even remember how this smells, if it smells of anything. But anyway, this video I'm going to find out. So, I'm just going to show you, I'm going to get off screen, I'm going to show you the Aquamaster, all the bits and pieces. And first, firstly, before using it for any wet use, I'm going to use it for dry first, otherwise I'd have to wait for it to dry out. So I'm going to do some uh, tests, or just some demos really, picking up dry debris. And then we're going to have a look at the shampoo function. Lots to look forward to, so grab yourself a cuppa, visit the lavatory if you have to, and settle down for some vintage Hoover Aquamaster action. Okie dokie, pig em a pokey. here we have everything that I'm going to show you today. Now this was the basic model 
Hoover Aquamaster, the second generation, there was a couple of machines that came before this, and they changed it slightly. They changed the bin, they stylized the bin a bit more, it's got a new bumper. But the main change was they put the shampoo solution tube inside the hose, which was uh, quite a boon back then, um, as opposed to the Vax models that were available at the time, you still had to clip the shampoo hose to the tube. With the later generations of Aquamaster, you didn't have to do that. The only tube I need to clip to anything is this little bit of tubing, which I need to click onto the extension tubes when I use it for floor or carpet cleaning. Now there's two things that didn't come with this model. There were two models available. This is the S4470 and there was the S4472, which was the Aquamaster Electronic. Exactly the same basically as this machine, different colour, but it also had an electronic motor speed control on the top. And the addition of the Aquamaster shampoo nozzle for upholstery. Now I bought this with the power sponge and with this carpet shampoo and floor detergent. I bought this from eBay after I got the Aquamaster. So basically this it's going to be the same, more or less, as the electronic, because it has a shampoo nozzle now, but it, of course, we don't have the electronic control. So this is the upholstery shampoo nozzle. So basically, it's just a smaller version of the carpet washing nozzle, which is here. Still, it's quite narrow compared to upright carpet washers you get today. If I was to do a whole carpet with this, which I might do actually. My living room carpet could do with a bit of a going over. That's going to take some time. So the upholstery nozzle, that's good for doing of course your upholstery inside your car, your stairs, but because this is pump fed, it's, it's not pump fed, sorry, it's gravity fed, there's no pump, it does mean I have to raise the machine up in order to do the upholstery. So here is the small shampoo nozzle with the little bit of tubing that that plugs into the handle on the hose. So that was an additional purchase I bought to go with this. And, of course, the power sponge attachment. Vax had their own similar hard floor washing attachment with their machines. And this is Hoover's version. I actually do have another one of these, brand new and unused, so I'm not too concerned about using this. I did have one of these when they originally came out. So here is the Hoover Aquamaster power sponge. And you can't buy replacement sponges anymore, that's the first thing that will perish. So that's why I've, I'm glad I've got another one. So basically what this machine does, it distributes the cleaning solution onto the sponge, wets the sponge, so you go over the floor with the wet sponge and also then you can just tilt the head and suck up the water. There is a squeegee section here, a suction channel, there's a squeegee at the back, two wheels, so in here we've got this little black piece that fits into the top of the nozzle and then we plug in the shampoo tube into that. You've also got a little brush on the front, so you can flip the nozzle, if you get any stubborn dirt, you can flip the nozzle that way, have a scrub away at anything stubborn, maybe um, some shoe polish or, or something, a shoe uh, scuff mark. So once you've loosened that, you can turn the head back around, go over it again, and then suction up the water. So, there we go, that's the Aquamaster Power Sponge, of course, I will be demonstrating that alongside all the other features of this vacuum is the clean water tank unlike the vac system which had a, a tank that fitted inside this fits on top of the motor unit so basically when I do the demonstration I'm going to put one sachet of the solution into here fill it up with warm water and pop it on the top of the cleaner and then 
This blue end, oops, there we go, this blue end goes into a little blue hole on the body of the machine, and this part goes into a little connection just on the collar of the hose, so that feeds the solution through the hose to the nozzle. So the advantage of that is the machine, when you're using it as a dry cleaner, it's quite light. It was lighter than the VAX equivalent at the time, and it was more powerful. So, although they did slightly copy VAX, Hoover tended to do that, especially in the 90s. They tended to sort of poo-poo new advances until people started buying them, and they would bring out their own version, and often they would do it slightly better. And the Aquamaster, certainly compared to the, say, the Vax 121, was an improvement. Because I had the original Vax, and I did find this much better, much quieter, and it did dry the carpet better. Here's the small dry cleaning tools. You can use this for wet as well. There's your standard Hoover pip-fitting crevice tool. Your Hoover all-purpose nozzle. You can use that for wet use if you have a spill. The dusting brush, when I unbox this, it's a bit better. I have done the hot water trick. The brushes were a bit more distorted than this. They're still a bit distorted. But there is a dusting brush, quite a nice dusting brush. But that's only for dry use. It came, actually, with this 1001 Auto Shampoo with built-in defoamer. See, the earlier Vax machines, the tub machines, you had to buy a separate defoamer that went in the dirty water tank to stop any excess foam from getting into the motor. So there's a vintage solution made by 1001 PC Products Limited. You've seen that detergent. I'm not sure if that's the same as 1001. It could be. You've got one bag with this, quite a large bag, H15 bag, for all Aqua Master models, Aqua Plus, and Module 900 models plus. Who are the commercial tank cleaners? So there we are, that's a genuine Hoover bag. Then we've got the, as I showed you earlier, the little tube with the clips. Two metal extension tubes. Here's the carpet and floor nozzle. Still lovely and clean and unused. Quite a decent quality nozzle, this, with the brushes down for hard floors, brushes up for carpets, and again. Dry use only. We were not to pick up liquids with this. Well, that is also that's an improvement on the first generation Aquamasters. It was a, a different style nozzle. This one certainly was an improvement over the first ones. Again, I had the first ones, so I can make a direct comparison. Put that there. So here is the hose with the integrated tube. So here's the handle with a suction control, just the little collar there that you turn to reduce suction. I've never found any need to reduce the suction. There's only one, I suppose, one reason you could use it on less suction. If you, when you were shampooing your carpets, while you're applying the shampoo, you could have that open so it gives the shampoo a bit of a chance to penetrate a bit deeper and to work. But always when you're drying the carpet, when you're not applying the solution, you always have that closed. So we have the maximum suction. It does swivel, but it does have a stop. Because obviously it's got the small tube inside. If it was to go all the way around, it would twist up that tube. So it has some sort of a swivel, but not a full 360 degree one. And on the top here, we've got the solution. When you're storing it away, if you've got one of those, these, and always store it in the open position because if you store it the closed position where the shampoo is not flowing is at the front. If you store it away for a long period like that it's going to kink the internal hose so when you do come to use it and you release it to the open position it could restrict the flow of shampoo. And I do believe Hoover did say something about that in the instructions. So I'll just show you what it looks like with the upholstery head on, so you just put the upholstery head directly onto the handle and then you take the tube and you'd stick it into there. So now we've got, it's all set up, apart from it's not got shampoo in it, but that's how you'd set it up 
for upholstery cleaning. Obviously, if you're doing your carpets, you'd attach the extension tubes instead, and then you'd attach the carpet shampoo nozzle on the end, and of course, the longer tube you need to clip onto the extension tubes. So, let's take the hose off. So that the screw fitting, and we can see now taking the hose off, we can see the internal solution pipe, which hopefully after all this year, all these years of being stored, I've not used this machine since I unboxed it. This is going to be the first time I have switched it on after fitting a plug because I did have to fit a plug. There's obviously quite a lot of slack in there to allow for any stretch. The hose isn't a stretch hose, but it does have some stretch. So there's that. Obviously, there's quite a lot of slack in there to prevent anything from being stretched. And there's at the top, there's a little hole where I attach the feed pipe from the clean water tank. And it's a multifunction hose, you use it for wet and dry. I would have liked to have seen a separate hose and accessories for dry use, but just like the pneumatic George, that comes with two hoses, which is a good idea really. Because if you use this, if this was your only vacuum and you use it for wet cleaning, you have to wait for it to dry out before using it for dry use. So it's a bit inconvenient. But I think a lot of the people who own these, they owned them as a second vacuum. They had a regular vacuum they used. And the wet and dry Aquamaster used to come out just for the shampooing or for the dirtier jobs or cleaning up a flood. So there we go. It looks like a, like a little bit of a Dalek, doesn't it? Nice branding Hoover Aquamaster and that's where you store the flex. I've done it rather neater than most people would. The flex stores around there. I fitted this plug because it was so old it didn't actually have a plug fitted to it. So I put this Dewar plug on, bought this. It's not a vintage plug but this style of plug was available when this machine was available. So there's that and of course you've got your little clip to hold the flex together so it doesn't untangle when you're carrying the machine. And with two clips either side to release the motor unit. Out comes the motor unit. Let's just pop the plug down. I'll unwrap it while I'm here. Undo the cable. So there is the little hole where you'd put the blue end of the feed tube. That helps provide pressure in the system because it takes some of the exhaust air from the machine and actually pumps it into the clean water tank which causes a, a, a very small that sort of pressurized system. So it does help to move the shampoo along the tubes. That and the suction of the machine helps pull the shampoo through. Not as effective as a pumped machine though. Underneath, that's where the motor is and we've got the ball in the cage that will raise up when you're using it in wet mode. So when it's full, that will cut the suction off and you must empty the cleaner. Nice handle. The earlier Aquamasters had a folding handle. They went to the fixed design. On off switch with a um, splash proof cover. And here where this blanking piece is, I think it was here, somewhere around here, you, there would have been an additional dial on the electronic model. So there's the motor unit, let's pop that to one side on the chair. This is the dry filter. You must use a bag in it as well, but once the bag's in you put that dry filter in place, but only for dry. And I'm not sure if you can wash this. I think I used to wash them, but I'm not sure if you, you were supposed to. But it says inside, important, this filter must always and only be used for dry pickup. It must be removed for wet pickup, because if you didn't, the float valve wouldn't operate and you could be in with a bit of a shock, literally. So, final thing to show you before I get on with the demo is the dirty water bucket itself. It's quite a stable design, this. Five very smooth running casters. You can see inside there. That's the collar. That's best to show you. I don't know if that's best. There's the collar anyway that you attach, you push the bag onto. 
And any debris, if you don't have the bag, when, when it's used in wet mode, it, it comes in a spinning action. A cyclonic action, yes. That's why it's designed in that, that way. It deflects the water that comes into the machine. It deflects it directly from the ball cage. Deflects it around like a wall of death. Those, those motorbikes going around the wall of death. That's a similar sort of thing. So, there we go. I've shown you all the bits and pieces. Now it's time to get this ready for dry pickup. And then we'll just throw some dirt on the floor and then on the carpet and we'll see how it performs.